Hello and welcome back to my channel. This cake has a lot of fun elements that are fun each by themselves, but also really fun together here. First, we'll talk about how to make this marbled buttercream effect. It works with really any color scheme. I usually just do a couple of colors for this, but for this cake, I thought it would be fun to use a rainbow color palette. Get your buttercream colors into their own bowls and then add a little bit of white to each one. Swirl it with your spatula, don't mix it entirely. You want some of the white showing. Next, I'm applying them with my offset spatula to this sheet of acetate here. You can also use parchment paper for this, however, sometimes parchment paper leaves the buttercream looking a little wrinkled where acetate sheet really makes it look smooth. Continue this until the acetate sheet is fully covered. I'm also adding some little blobs of white in between my colors too. Once the acetate sheet is fully covered with your buttercream, I'm just going to take my offset spatula and smooth it out a little bit. I'm not going to fully mix or swirl it all together. I just want to get it fully covered. My crumb coated cake has been in the fridge for quite a while so it's very cool and chilled. I'm just going to pick up this acetate sheet and wrap it around my cake, making sure it's smooth and I'm going to use my hands and my scraper to kind of smooth it out and press it against the cake. My cake will go into the fridge for about 20 minutes with the acetate sheet on. Then I took it back out of the fridge and just peeled the sheet off and the buttercream was left behind. Next I took a very small sharp knife and ran it under hot running water to heat it up and I cut the excess at the top off giving it a smooth sharp edge. There were just a couple spots I wanted to smooth so I just ran my scraper around it one more time. This cake went back into the fridge for about 20 minutes to fully set up. And I applied the Sweets and Treats Boutique Edible Luxe Dust in Opal. This is a really unique glitter dust because it makes any color look really shimmery and really neat. It doesn't take much dust or much effort, you just use a big fluffy clean makeup brush and dust it all over the cake very lightly. And here's what each of the colors look with the shimmer powder applied. Next I'll work on my ganache drip while that cake is in the fridge getting cold again. My recipe for white chocolate ganache is very approximate. I use about a ratio of 1 to 3 heavy cream to white chocolate chips. However, I do add a few extra white chocolate chips at the end because I often want my drip to be a bit thicker. And just pretend you don't see all the chocolate chips I spilled all over my counter. Heat my cream in the microwave just until I see bubbles on the top, but you can also use the stove top of course. Then I pour the chips in, cover it with a warm towel, and let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes. And I just stir until everything is smooth. If there still are some pieces of chocolate chips, you can pop it back in the microwave for a few more seconds. It is optional, but I do like to use a white gel coloring to make the color a little more white and a little more opaque. This actually helps with any color you add too, it makes it a little more opaque. You can find this product in my Amazon storefront if you're looking for some. You want a very chilled set cake for this and you'll want your ganache to be just a bit warmer than room temperature. I'm going to test strip or two down the back of the cake. If it runs way too fast and way too far, you'll need to let it cool a little bit or add more chips and remix. Or if it doesn't run at all, you'll want to melt it a little bit longer. There are a few different methods for applying a drip. You can use a spoon and just push drips over little by little. You could use a squirt bottle and control the drips. Sometimes I like this, I'll just like to pour it on and let the drip go where it drips. And then you'll want to put this cake back into the fridge. I'm preparing my piping bag to pipe the borders around my cake. I developed this method for piping rainbow colors a while back because if you put them all in the same bag, I had a little trouble keeping the colors bright throughout the bag as they'll tend to mix and become kind of a muddy brown color at the end. I spread them out in a line on plastic wrap, spaced out, and then I cut in between them. That way they each can be rolled up in their own little piece of plastic wrap. And I'll put each of these individually wrapped rolls of buttercream into the bag together. Another benefit to this method, if you get them into the bag and you'll find one color is showing up more than the others, you can stop and readjust them and you won't have to waste any buttercream. When you're finished piping, if you have leftover buttercream, it won't be all mixed together. You can save your individual colors and just push them back in the bowl. I'm using a 1M tip here, but really any large open star tip will get the same effect. On the top of our cold cake, we'll start by piping the spiral border. Squeeze to attach the buttercream to the cake, and then begin piping in a circular motion over and over as you spin your turntable slowly. 
The key here is not to go too fast and to make sure each coil lays on the last one. Take a break and adjust your grip on the bag. Pull the buttercream in toward the center and then readjust your grip and then you can just start piping right back on top of the little tail it makes and no one will see. On the bottom I'm going to pipe a shell border. Think about squeezing the buttercream, counting to four, and then just pulling away to release. It's okay to go slow and take your time on this one too. When piping rainbow colors, it's also fun to pause in between each shell and turn the bag slightly. That way you can see each of the colors across the bottom of the cake. The sprinkle mix I'll be using for this cake is Sweets and Treats Boutique's Peep Show Sprinkle Mix. It's a colorful range of non frills that I use to match my buttercream colors too. I started by pouring these over the top and the borders of the cakes using a small scoop. And then to apply these to the drip, Make sure your hands or your gloves are very clean. And then dab a little bit of Crisco or shortening on your finger to help stick the non frails to your finger. You can just take these and stick them right onto the sprinkle drip gently. And then I decided we need a little bit more in the top order. Here's what it looks like. Thank you so much for watching. This is one of my favorite methods to use. Let me know what other color schemes this would be fun in. If you like this one, make sure to subscribe. I've got some more themes and some other techniques I'm really excited to show you this summer. Thanks again.